product development as well as uh, implementations of various uh, OBA projects as well as ETL and uh, uh, OBA W projects. Um, basically, I started uh, as an ETL developer with Informatica. Uh, later, I moved on to ODA, OBA, and implementation side. Okay, that's about uh, myself. Uh, uh, about today's session, I uh, will uh, quickly uh, touch upon the basic concepts of OBA and um, any any questions about the structure of this course, uh, any anything uh, like how, what is your background and what is the requirement, anything of those uh, questions if you have, I will take it. Uh, this session will be roughly around uh, uh, 30, 30 minutes plus uh, the question and answers. Fine, uh, let's begin with the introduction about this uh, uh, product, like having a overview. What is what is OBA means? Right. So many people will uh, ask me these questions: Is OBA double E and OBA are same? Right. So, like, what is the difference? So what is that product itself? OBA is out of the box data warehouse. What do you mean by out of the box? data warehouse. What is data warehouse? So whenever we have a, a, a transaction systems, OLTP transaction systems, to understand in which direction our um, business is going towards, to understand it, to understand the trend, to get the insights of the business, we have a business intelligence. Um, to get such uh, reports, dashboards, etc., we need to build uh, data warehouse from the scratch. We have to read the uh, online transaction systems, build the ETL, build the reports on top of that. So here, OBIA is the out-of-the-box warehouse, which is BI apps, which is available for us. What does it mean? It means there are there are so many systems um, around us, right? There are um, so many ERP systems, there are so many uh, CRM systems, HCM systems, right? There are so many systems around us. Uh, probably there is a, you know, say there's a big organization which is using uh, a ERP system. This is one more organization which is using a similar ERP system, that means the, the internal metadata what is available will be same in both organizations. The structure, I mean, when I say data, the metadata structure, correct? So if if one organization wants to build a <clears throat> warehouse, they have to build their own ETL and build the reports. The, the second organization also have to same do the same thing on the same metadata structure. So the underlying principle is the structure, the the store system structure will be same on both organizations as long as they're using the same product, the same version, right? Like that, there are many um, systems, source systems which are around us. So that is the, uh, the baseline for this product. Since there are many uh, commonly used products, so why cannot we have uh, adapters for all those things which can be used, which can be plugged into any any environment which is using the same version of the product and build uh, build the reports on top of that. So that is that is the uh, OBIA all about. So that is a pre-built warehouse which is available, which can be plugged into any source system using the adapters which are available and light up the dashboard. So there are so many <clears throat> dashboards, there are many reports which are available out of the box. On top of that, that can be highly customizable. You can say if there is a report which is uh, probably not, uh, you, you want to add more uh, metrics into it, or maybe you want to build a one uh, report of your own, that, that time also we can build one more uh, uh, report. So we, it can be customized at any level. It can be customized at ATL level um, or reporting level. So this is about uh, the product overview. 
and uh, we we will learn more about uh, more about the the customizations um, etc in upcoming sessions so it can be uh, it can be used erp systems crm systems but within erp there are so many uh, analytics which are available so uh, there is a resource planning analytics right these are the erp uh, the analytics which are under the uh, resource planning analytics um, see there is a hcm manufacturing procurement project supply chain student analytics there are many uh, things which are available so anyone here who worked on the source systems probably will be aware there are there are these modules are um, available in the erp right so what will be there right so if you take example of uh, financial analytics right there are many things there will be sub ledgers ledgers uh, ap's account receivables accounts payables right uh, fixed assets there are many things many modules which are there inside of financial um, uh, analytics right so probably there will be some companies which are using only the uh, gs and uh, uh, ap's they may not be using ars right so account receivables that those modules for each each thing there will be i mean it it can be called as a subject area there will be uh, modules which are available and there will be a, uh reports which are related to each uh, subject area each module right so like this uh, if you take example of a uh, procurement and spend analytics there are um, there are metrics or uh, dashboards reports which are um, available which would um, help you to understand your process what is the performance or like what is the supplier performance like um, where your money is going like on what um, on what uh, portion right on what um, objects you are spending more right you are analyzing your spend right so what are you procuring more what are you procuring less what is the performance uh, if you take a supplier like how many days is taking to uh, raise invoice like how much time is taking to deliver right what is this? everything can be captured all the insights can be captured so for this there are readily available uh, reports okay so this is about um, two uh, two analytics I, I covered but there are many analytics which are available there is a marketing analytics there is a sales analytics um, there is a HCM related analytics there is a projects analytics there are many student analytics there are many analytics which are uh, available so this 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 product as a whole have all the analytics but as a customer like there may be very less chances where I'm use I need all of them but I, I may need say um, I am a I'm a manufacturing company right I need analytics which are related to the manufacturing maybe I'm a college or a university I, I need the analytics only related about the academics that's the student analytics right so I can buy only those particular uh, services um, in fact it is uh, how, how it is uh, plugged right there is a ETA layer on the one side there's a reporting layer on the other side that is the ETA layer is ODI here Oracle data integrator that we uh, that's a ELT tool which is available in the market that is little different from the ETL tool which is which are already available we learn about the uh, tool as well and on the reporting side the, there we have OPA double E okay so there are various layers within the uh, OPA double E anyone who worked on the OPA double E here uh, will be aware meanwhile uh, as as I continue uh, in this uh, uh, session uh, could you please ping me over the chat and let me know like who all worked on the OBA double or ODI right any detail like just let me know your background so that uh, I, would, I would understand um, like what is what is your current background and what are you expecting from this course so we have a physical layer uh, in the OBA double we will have a semantic or a business layer and the presentation layer so all these uh, layers are there within the reporting layer of OBIA so it can be customized at any level it can be customized at the ETL layer or 
it can be customized at a OBE double layer and within that in, even in the OBE double it can be customized at a physical or presentation or business layer in any, any way so what is the advantage so why why should I why should I um, procure OBIA uh, when I can build a new data warehouse right so building a new data warehouse is not a easy it's it's a I, I don't say it's a not easy task but it, it takes its own um, speed time and the cost right so the total cost of uh, ownership to build any new brand new warehouse is high we have to understand the source system we have to understand what are the source systems uh, what are the source systems you want to bring into the warehouse what are the metrics you want to analyze what are the reports you want to build after that you have to do a modeling then you have to design the ETL then you have to design the report you have to develop the ETL you have to develop the reports then you have to plan the loads you have to bring the data you have to validate against the source and uh, then only you can uh, roll out to the production right validation is very important because uh, uh, business intelligence products there should be accuracy unless uh, users don't have a trust on the system they're not going to use those reports right? so the TC or the total cost of the ownership will be high when you are building a, a system from the scratch whereas if you are using uh, OBIA there is a pre-built ETA layer this is a pre-built reporting layer this is a pre-built orchestration tool right those the entire code is validated right all you need to is do is plug into the your current system there are some uh, configurations you need to do set for example the localization setting the currencies all those things you have to uh, set up we, what we are going to discuss here what is what how, how do we do this uh, configuration and all we are going to discuss then we use it we run the loads regularly and light up the dashboards and use them right so this is the advantage of having a OBIA so this is not uh, this I'm just uh, summarizing but as we move on as we go in depth we try to understand what are the configurations we have to do what are the functional configurations what are the system configurations how do we generate the load plan how do you run them how do you monitor them how do you customize them all those things we are going to I discuss there are I, I give a brief about those things in the upcoming slides as well so this is uh, the overview of uh, OBIA let me quickly summarize if you can see here there are so many um, systems right? service marketing order management this these are the source systems it could be a it could be of any any kind right so we can build these reports right but everything comes from this model right warehouse and uh, these these things can be customized at any level so for example it could be a there are various source systems uh, which are it could be a EBS it could be a PeopleSoft it could be a Siebel right it could be a JD it could be a flat files there are so many uh, source systems which are uh, supported by OBIA uh, you can buy say for example there's a customer who is using UBS within EBS he is, he is using only the financial modules he can buy only that one and use configure only those things and use them right so that is how it is so as we as we move on uh, we we, uh, we can uh, go more deeper into this and try to understand how how they are different and what as a as a as a developers as a implementation specialist right as a consultant how do we need to configure those how do we um, run them what is that we are going to do what is our role so understanding the product and how do we are going to implement it implement and how do we customize how do we change the mappings how do we uh, modify the reports all those things we we understand as we move on again I, I told um, here the the ETL tool is the ELT tool is ODI okay uh, there are there are some primary differences between the ODI 
versus any other ETL tool which is available in the market. So, uh, can someone give examples of the tools, uh, ETL tools which you are aware of? Anyone? can ping me over the chat, right, Informatica, right, this Informatica is one of the, uh, like, uh, very, very important tool, right, very important ETL tool which is available in the market. So, in fact, OBI, the earlier versions of OBI had Informatica as ETL layer. The latest, that OBI 11G version, that tool is replaced by uh, ODI. So, this is the difference, ETL versus the ELT, the concept, the underlying principles of ETL and ELT as are different. Uh, um, as you are aware, ETL is extract, transform and load, right? We, we extract from the source, right? So, some source systems, it could be anything, it could be EBS, it could be a PIPsoft, it could be a, uh, just a plain database, it could be a uh, flat files, it could be Excel files, .txt files, it could be XML, anything, right, any any source system we can bring, I can, we transform, we apply some transformations on top of that, probably we want to apply some filters, you want to um, concatenate first name and last name, there are, there are, you want to look up on something else, you want to sort, right, there are so many things which you can do, maybe you want to do a pivoting, you want to do a, a transpose, there are many things what you can do and the transformations uh, level and then we load. Where do we load? We load into a destination, in most of the case it could be a data warehouse or it could be a anything, right? So we, we load into a, um, a target destination, target, right? But here, the concept of ELT is slightly different because it will extract, that step is same as ETL, but we load. Where do we load? Right. We load into a temporary work tables and then we transform. Then we load into the actual final target. So, when I, when I say load into work tables, what are work tables? How do we create them? How, how do we manage them and what are the advantages of having the ETL, uh, sorry, ELT versus ETL, right? So, there are, there are uh, concepts what we are going to discuss and um, this, this cannot be understood unless we, we know uh, the basics of the ODI and architecture of the ODI, right? So, those things we, we are going to uh, discuss in this course as well. So, at least uh, as a implementation specialist, before you do any customization, if, if, you are, if you want to do any customization, you need to understand the existing code. You need to understand the tool, ODI tool as well, right? So, uh, those things, the process, knowing the process is one thing and you need to know the tool, you need to understand what is currently being done so that you can modify or add anything uh, which is in sync with the existing code, right? So that's about the uh, ELT, so we are going to discuss uh, on those things as well. So, whenever you are doing a customization or whenever you are understanding uh, the OBIA, the module, you need to understand the tables, right? OBIA W means Oracle Business Applications Warehouse Tables. There is a fact dimensions, which you are aware, many dimensions, what are helper tables, hierarchy tables. There is a concept of staging here. We, we read from the source, move into the staging, and finally we move into the uh, final tables, the warehouse tables. So, where, where do staging exist? How do we handle them? How do we uh, uh, link them with the final tables, right? What should be the load strategy for the staging? What should be the load strategy for the final tables? All those things we are going to uh, discuss. There will be a common dimensions, conforming dimensions. How do we identify them? What, what is mean by common dimensions, what are the common dimensions which are available. So, we need to understand um, this, the warehouse, the entire metadata structure, so that we can start with the customizations, any level, like if, even if you are running a load and you, you, you see some uh, load failures or maybe some records are rejected, to troubleshoot that also, you should be aware of the, the module, the, the model we should be aware of, aware of those table structures, right? Coming to the ETL uh, uh, phases, 
there are um, there are there are three primary um, uh, phases. I don't know if anyone uh, have worked on the any other versions of the OBI earlier. That is same uh, in all the versions across the versions. There are SD mappings, right? So they will have their own uh, purpose, right? They're the source dependent. Like what is mean by source dependent, right? Where do we like when when we are doing the customizations? Where do we do, right? And what are SILs? That's the source independent uh, loads, right? Why do we need them? How do we run them? What is the order of the run execution? Then we have a PLPs, post load process, right? Uh, what are those? How do we identify them? What's the purpose? What is the difference between other two uh, phases and this one, right? So all those things we, uh, we, we are going to discuss and we are going to see them in the tool, right? We are going to see them in the uh, ODA. Okay, so this is the overview of the process. We have a ODA agent which links between all these things. There will be a ODA repository, right? Since uh, it's a ELT tool, uh, it is it is a repository driven tool. There are two types of repository: one the master repository and the work repository. There's a difference between these two repositories, and there is a purpose of for each repository. Uh, we, we we need to understand okay what is the report the repository structure and uh, there is a link between this uh, ODA metadata and our load plan generation uh, tool right so what is the link how do we troubleshoot how do we configure while configuring what is that we need to understand correct and what are the configurations we have to do how do we troubleshoot all those things we discuss as we uh, move on Okay, so as I said, there is a pre-built ETL uh, logic which is available. This is a, just a snapshot uh, I have put here. So you can see there's a, uh, there are mappings, there are uh, there are so many adapters which are available, right? You can see there's a Fusion, JD, um, Oracle, various versions of the Oracle, PeopleSoft, right? All those things, uh, all those adapters which are available, uh, we can we, we may need to work on any of them uh, there will be cases uh, organizations use different sources they use people soft as well as EBS then in in that such cases how to handle like how to customize all those uh, we need to uh, understand so uh, whenever we start with the OBIA uh, see uh, OBIA as a whole it has two parts that's OBIA and ODA this, this is a combination of to most of the customizations it could be either on the ETL side or it could be on the reporting side so when whenever there is a need to uh, bring all the way from the source system to the dashboard that's one thing right and there could be a, a customization requirement where we need to use a, reuse the existing one and build something uh, different correct so whenever we are um, handling the ETL we need to understand what is project means, what is adopter means. Like as I was telling, what is adopter? Like there are so many adopters: Fusion adopter, JD adopter. There's ABS. There's a PeopleSoft. There's a Cibo. But there are many adopters which are available. What are those? Within that, what are the various stages? That is phases. Uh, the source dependent. What is source independent? What is post load? Right. What is scenario? What is package? Right. What are knowledge modules? But are the existing knowledge modules? So we need to understand uh, these things. It's nothing but knowing the ODA as well, right? So uh, to to get a better understanding of this whole uh, product, we need to we need to um, understand ODA and as well as OBA. If you have knowledge of these two, like what we are going to cover in this uh, uh, course as well, then we need to understand this. Uh, we, the, the product as a whole right um, th there will be load plans uh, the, we, we, we like if say if, are, if everything is set up we are going to execute there could be a failures there could be um, load plans which are running maybe daily loads weekly loads based on your customization based on your configuration there will be loads which will be running right so we, we need to understand them for example, if you're uh, uh, adding something new to the system, we need to add them to the system load plans which are already 
uh, in place, right? So all those things we need to uh, understand. So as I said, that could be a multi 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 source environment, right? There may be uh, two different versions of the same um, ERP, right? It, the, you you may have a R two L and R eleven, for example, right? So those things uh, we need to understand in case of uh, different uh, source systems. How do we handle? How do we differentiate them? How do we troubleshoot them? All those things we we can uh, we need, we are going to cover. So this is a just a snapshot of a functional setup manager. As I said, uh, we need to do a lot of functional setups, right? Uh, it's it's a part of the configuration. Whenever you you set up and install OBIA, there will be a need to do a functional configuration. For example, what is the currency you are going to use? Right? Um, what is what is the language you are going to choose? So what are the offerings? Like it, as I said, you, you probably you are using only few modules within within HCM. What are those you are going to uh, enable? How do you enable? Right? How do we orchestrate? If if you are adding a new uh, customization, like if you are adding say the entire uh, um, couple of um, packages in, into this existing ETL and how do we configure say if you if you add it into the load plans how do we come what is that you are going to do in the functional manager or configuration right so the, we, we need to understand the uh, the relationship between each and everything so that we we understand the whole product so understanding OBI is nothing but understanding the the the, the sub tools which are used inside the product and knowing that uh, the relationship right so that is about the functional manager so uh, the, the final um, goal of any uh, warehouse is we, we set up everything and we need to ensure that uh, it will it will be running in a periodic manner right it could be daily weekly uh, once in two days once in three days or, and so on, right? So everything is developed, we rolled out, then we define the load plan, we test it, we generate the load plan, test it, and execute, test it, validate it, then we monitor the load. Then finally we roll out to the production, and there also we need to monitor it. We need to monitor, so any failures in the, um, in the system, maybe uh, due to the code issues, it could be a, uh, because of some key violation issues, it could be because of some unidentified characters, or it could be a space issue, table space issues. There are so many issues what comes when uh, the daily uh, loads are happening. So we need to troubleshoot, we need to understand uh, that also we, we do the exercise where we are going to define the load plan, generate the load plan, execute, uh, see what are the issues what we are going to uh, uh, face and uh, uh, try to fix them. Right, so this is about uh, the whole uh, whole product. Uh, we started with the introduction about the OBA. What do we need? What are the advantages? Like how it is different from the existing ones, right? And uh, how 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 we are going to do a uh, customizations, right? How uh, what are the components we need to understand? All those things uh, we we covered. So in this course, we are uh, not only understanding the product. Uh, we need we need to how to how do we configure what are the various components inside that how do we identify the helper tables how do we identify the staging tables how do we troubleshoot right um, all those things we are going to cover and uh, we are going to do a hands-on as well so um, that's all I had for today um, I, I, I see a couple of people who are worked on uh, OBA double uh, I see, yeah, 11 G. So fine. Okay. Um, any any questions? Uh, please let me know. You can uh, ping me over the chat, or you can speak up. Anything could be about uh, the tool. It could be about the course, the structure.
no we don't have class tomorrow uh, class will be on tuesday yeah um installing everything on your laptop uh, uh, could be difficult uh, there will be vm uh, which you can use uh, for hands on yeah environment details will be shared later Fine then. Um, right, that's correct. Yes, it will help uh, if you have uh, experience on ODA and uh, OBW. You can you can pick it up. It's not a knowing any one of them is advantage. Even if you know. If you don't know either of them, and uh, if you have a SQL knowledge, then also it will help. Well, yeah, if you have worked on any any uh, BI project on any using any ETL or um, even having a source system knowledge, all those things uh, will help you. Fine then. Uh, uh, if if you don't have any any questions, let's uh, conclude for today. Uh, thank you everyone for attending the demo session today, and uh, have a have a nice rest of the day. See you again. Bye bye.